Tua Tonga Vailoa. Rib injury. Initially, the x-rays were negative. Apparently, additional testing Sunday into Monday and maybe into Tuesday resulted in a determination that it is not a an insignificant injury. Here's Brian Flores, coach of the Dolphins from yesterday, talking about Tua's status. You know, I said on Monday that we're going to uh, run some more tests. We ran those tests. Uh, Tua is, he'll be out this week. Um, he has fractured ribs. Um, so obviously he's in a lot of pain. Um, uh, so he'll be out this week. Uh, Jacoby will start. Um, and we're just going to take it week to week. Really, you know, let's call it day to day and week to week. But he'll be out this week. Just kind of want to, you know, put that out there right now. Um, look, he, he, this is a tough kid. He wants to play. He's actually trying to play. And we're just going to, you know, uh, save him from himself a little bit on this. Big difference between day to day and week to week. And I'm not sure which label officially applies here. Week to week implies that. You know, it's going to be a little while. Day to day, he could be back any time. We know he's not going to be back on Sunday. And they didn't play the game of, you know, maybe he'll be good to right, go. Maybe right. he'll be ready. Right. And and the, the and I remember when Donovan McNabb had fractured ribs at one point, there is a concern that if the fracture's bad enough, that if it gets hit again, the rib actually can become detached and cause internal damage. You know, the question is, is the rib sticky to the to the rest of the rib right but un unless the report was incorrect that the x-rays were negative i don't know whether the team said that or whether it was a report from nfl media i know nfl media said it uh, unless that was incorrect i assume the fractures are more along the lines of too small for an x-ray to pick up but something that they picked up through their other testing which would imply it's not a serious fracture, but still, if there's a fracture, if there's pain, if there's decreased mobility, you don't want to put the guy back out there and put him at risk of further injury and also put him back out there when, as we said with Carson Wentz, he's not as effective as he otherwise would be. No, right. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, it's a big game for them, too. They're one-on-one -on -one trying to rebound. They don't want to have to, like, manage the game to, like, our quarterback can't do this. Let's figure out a new way to run this play and do that because he can't do that. That's, I mean, that's just tough living in the NFL to to have to, like, basically dumb down your, your offensive game plan because a quarterback is playing through injury like that. I don't, you know – uh, I, 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 it's, uh, yeah, it's he's a second-year quarterback. You know, I, I don't expect them to be able to do that either. I don't know if they're good enough to be able to overcome that type of circumstance. And I think the other thing too is just like, you know, it, it's on his left side. He's a lefty. I think that's another thing that you know it, it makes it different than the quarterback who gets hit in the ribs in the non-throwing side of your body. But that left rib area with fractures. You know, I, I've never fractured the ribs, but I've certainly been beat up in that area and bruised. And, of course, when you throw, there's so much torque and bend through that area when you're throwing the ball to create that slingshot with your arm. That, I would imagine, has to be really painful and an issue to where it would affect just his throwing a slant route six or seven yards. You know, it's going to affect decision-making off of that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's – it's one of those things where they'll reevaluate next week, but it, it sounds like it might be two weeks before he can really get going again. We'll, we'll see where it goes. Also, there's a strategic reason for the Dolphins not to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about the severity of the situation if it is week to week or maybe even month to month. And that is to the extent, and we don't know this yet, but there's no reason for them to be this candid with us if it is something that they think is going to put Tua on the shelf for a while and it has caused Stephen Ross, the owner of the team, to begin agitating again for a Deshaun Watson trade, sure. you don't want to go back to the Texans at a time of intense and urgent need because there's no way in hell they're going to reduce their price. If anything, they may jack it up. They may want more. They may put a couple of thumbs on the scale on both elbows if they know that you are desperate now to do this deal because that hasn't gone away. Brian Flores has done a nice job of quieting it down. Yeah. The desire by the owner of the team, Stephen Ross, to get Deshaun Watson has not diminished. He's extremely pissed. Sorry, Bristol. And hello, Bristol. I got your email there, Dave. Hello to you and your boys in Bristol. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Ross is not happy it got out that he really wants Deshaun Watson. But 
He really wants Deshaun Watson. And and if this is a multi-week injury, Chris, again, November 2 is when the window closes. You still can't rule out the possibility of the Dolphins doing the deal, especially if two is out and if Jacoby Brissett doesn't get it done. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I want it just, you know, we, we know there's too much truth behind all of this. We, we both know that. I know too many people in football that, yeah, have confirmed that. So, uh, and, you know, to, to what you said, when the owner is backing it, there's always that possibility. I mean, yeah, it just it's just a matter of time when he says, do it, do it now. I don't care what you give. I mean, there, there's always that. But, but I, I mean, again, I don't know. I guess I don't feel like that's going to happen this year. Um, but I, I do feel for Tua, who, you know, of course, is just getting going here early in his career and to deal with this. And, hey, listen, this is one of the things I think people were concerned about with Tua when he came into the NFL. He's a smaller guy. He's one of the smallest quarterbacks in football. I mean, if not the smallest other than Kyler Murray. But Kyler Murray has three rockets up his butt like we've talked about, and that changes it. And that Tua does not have that. And, you know, even the way he got hit in that game, you know, A.J. Espinessa, hey, that was a, a violent hit. I'm certainly not. But he's not like a, the, the most giant man in the history of football coming around the edge either, you know. But Tua, I, I, you know, like we've seen is what, six foot and a half maybe, six one. It's not like incredibly thick or big that way either. Um, so we'll see where this goes, but man, that's, that's a tough injury on your throwing, you know, throwing shoulder, throwing side there to, to, to come back from right away. He, he's a thinner version of Russell Wilson. There that's you go. Ru that's a good Russ way to has put the it. Thick, has the thickness to him. Right. That gives him that, that suit of broader armor. shoulders. And yes, and definitely. Tua doesn't. No. Tua is slighter. Right. Tua is skinnier and uh, not as skinny as me, but he's skinnier. Yeah. Uh, w one last point. <laughs> If you're Steven Ross and you're doing the mental gymnastics as to what it's going to take to get Deshaun Watson and the Texans are saying we want three ones and two twos or three twos or whatever they want, I would say to Chris Greer and to Brian Flores, look at what we did with the three ones we had last year in Tua Tonga Vailoa, Austin Jackson, and Noah Igbenogany. Wouldn't you in a heartbeat Send those three guys 100%. plus other stuff to See the ya. Texans for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, yeah, no, that's in a heartbeat. That's a, it's a it's a really valid point by you, Mike. There, there's no there's no doubt. You know, I, I you know may, maybe because they missed on some of those. That's maybe why they're going, man. Maybe we need to go back to the drawing board and keep some of those draft picks. I, but you're you're right. I mean, well, as, but no, but you're right. Your point is right. I'm just throwing the other side of that. But if I if I'm the owner, but if yeah. I'm the owner of the team, I'm saying, guys, we have not demonstrated. An ability institutionally in recent years just to, to deliver right. on these high draft picks. Yeah. You know, to the extent that teams believe that those first round picks are worth their weight in gold, are the unused lottery ticket, and this is the mindset. Before you scratch the metallic paint off, you don't know what that card's gonna be. That card has real value. Half the time that card is gonna end up being nothing. But it's got the potential to be something. And if you can dangle cards that another team may be in a better position to turn into something than you can. Because it's not just luck. It's not just arbitrary. Your scouting methods, your ultimate decision making has something to do with it. You can pick the right guys. You can develop the right guys. If you can trade three guys that haven't worked out or picks that became three guys that didn't work out, assuming that you know, we're going to continue this trend. Do it. Get the guy that you know is a high-end talent if you can do it. And, and again, that, that's the disconnect between the people who are the football lifers and the billionaires who are otherwise doing all sorts of things. They swoop in with a very pragmatic view. Our first-round picks from last year stink. Right. All due respect. They don't, I, mean, I don't want to say they stink. But what I want to say is you'd gladly give them up for Deshaun Watson yeah. plus other stuff. So right. let's just do it. Let's no. just do it yeah. and be done with it. There's questions let's about all this. of them. Yeah. There's questions about yeah. all. Questions all right. about Tua. Questions about Austin Jackson. And, you know, Igabong, uh, you say his last name. Igbenogany. 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 Yes. Igbenogany. He, he hasn't been what they would hope to to this point. So your point is real. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, that's where I think about, like, a team like the Rams and go, oh, maybe that's why they trade away some of their first-round yep. picks all the time because they just go, we know Jalen Ramsey's an awesome player we'll go get him and whatever you guys figure out what the hell you want to do with that first round pick and yeah there's something to be said about that 
The problem is you got to pay those guys. That's too. the other problem. So yeah. if you do it with too many, if you do it with too many, your salary cap becomes an issue and you don't have depth because you can't pay yes. veterans to come in as the backups when guys get injured. But if you're just going to do it with one guy, do it with the quarterback. Do it with Deshaun Watson. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm talking myself into it. I'm talking myself into the idea that Stephen Ross should pick up the phone right now and call Cal McNair and say, what do you want? Let's get this done. Let's quit screwing around. It's hanging over you. It's hanging over me. Let's just be done with this and get it done. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.